Thanks, President Carl. Uh, today we have Laura and Vicki. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, Laura is a Monadnock region native. She has a passion about, for local food and community nourishing food. Laura holds a master's of science and sustainable food systems from Green Mountain College and is focused on food system education for communities and youth. Laura has varied experience in food systems, working in restaurants, food service facilities, urban bar farms, and retail operations. She teaches middle and high school theater at MOCA Arts and teaches youth cooking classes at Creative Arts and Keen summer camp, as well as youth cooking classes throughout the Monadnock Food Co-op. She's an organizer of the Monadnock Restaurant Project and serves on the Monadnock Fresh Board and is an active member of the Keens Lion Club. Recently, Laura received a Trendsetters Award from the Business Journal of Greater Keene, Brattleboro, Peterborough, and Keene Young Professionals Network for her work during the pandemic. Welcome, Laura. And Vicki Case was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, has a degree in special ed from Bowling Green State University, having spent many years in the Netherlands where she owned her own chocolate chip cookie business. She landed in Putney in 1982, teaching in Springfield, where she started a community Thanksgiving dinner that continues today. And finally settling in Brattleboro, where she worked for WKVT for 25 years. Vicki is a longstanding member of the Wyndham County Hunger Council, Youth Services Board member, and served as president of the Brattleboro Chamber of Commerce. Vicki is currently development manager at Food Connects and continuing helping to continue raising awareness of Food Connects and its farm to school program. Welcome, Vicki. Very happy to have you both here. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to Thank be here. You. Um, so I'm going to be giving the bulk of the presentation today. Vicki is still new, so she gets to learn and watch at the same time, but she'll jump in intermittently. And um, please feel free if you have any questions to let us know or tell me to slow down because I tend to be a fast talker. So let's see here. I want to make sure that's shared. Can everyone see my screen okay? Great. Yes. So um, as Vicki said, or as Betsy said, my name is Laura Carboneau and I am the marketing manager at Food Connects joined with Vicki who is our development manager. So who are we? Who is Food Connects? Food Connects was founded as the organization that it is today in 2013. When we were first created, we had many different iterations on top of the programs that we currently run. Currently, it included surveying Brattleboro, having a garden plot, and being a small-scale employer. But since then, we've narrowed our programming to include the Farm to School program, the Food Hub, and the Catalyst initiatives. This photo you see here is of our team in 2019, uh, when we thought our large team of 10 employees was really, really big. And, and now we're employing close to 20 people. So we've doubled in size since then. Uh, currently we're located in two spaces in the Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation's Business Park at the Old Book Press. And for those of you who are familiar with the space, our administrative and farm to school teams are located in offices at the front of the building and our food hub is located at the back of the building occupying a lot, our larger warehouse and 1,000 square foot cooler and freezer space right next to the loading docks. Our mission is to create healthy families, thriving farms, and connected communities. We're an entrepreneurial nonprofit that delivers local food and educational and consulting services aimed at transforming the local food system. As an organization, we aim to improve food access in various forms across the region. So how do we do that? First, our farm to school program. This team works with schools across Wyndham County providing coaching and support to build robust farm to school programs. A few of the ways we support schools include offering schools technical assistance for implementing nutrition education, cooking carts, taste tests, and school gardens, managing and implementing summer gardens at schools in the Brattleboro area, offering professional development for educators, school nutrition professionals, and administrators, providing schools with storytelling and marketing materials, and facilitating relationships between school nutrition programs and our food hub. 
during COVID-19, we really couldn't be in the schools, so our program has looked a little bit different. We helped with emergency meal delivery, including meal planning and delivery throughout shutdowns and all the holiday meal boxes. We've fo focused on um, tools for outdoor learning and helping schools get the materials they need to do so. And our team recently sent out over 800 sprouting kits to schools across the county, and they had to assemble them all themselves as well. Uh, our farm to school team plays an essential role in schools at the state, in schools and at the state level, advocating for universal meals to ensure that all children have access to nutrition, tr nutritious meals, which not, don't necessarily look like they used to many, many years ago. Our team also plays a big role in educating school staff on trauma-informed practices and what role they play in farm to school. Uh, just to narrate these photos, the photo on the left is from early on in COVID-19 when the WSESU was working to get meals delivered to children's homes. The photo in the middle is of students at Green Street School. And the photo on the right is of a kindergarten student at academy school and his sprouting kit. I'm not sure which sprouts those are. Um, just a couple more photos. So this photo on the left here, um, these are all of academy school as well, um, is of the COVID meal packing process, which looks very different than the photo in the middle, which is how students would normally get their meals in schools. And the photo on the right is of a cooking class uh, during COVID-19 using our outdoor cooking guidelines that we created um, and obviously doing some outdoor learning, a little cold in that picture. And lastly, these, these photos highlight our summer garden program. Um, the group on the, the left is from Oak Grove School and the middle is some pesto made from basil grown at Green Street School. And on the right is a student at Guilford Central School creating cyanotypes through our partnership with the River Gallery School. And you're just all so lucky because today we are hosting an Earth Day Garden Challenge. The Guilford Country Store actually um, donated $250 to our garden program as a match. And so we're trying to raise $250 today to support our summer garden programs at schools in the Brattleboro area. And you can find out more about information about this on our Facebook page, which is just uh, Food Connects, if you um, look that up on Facebook. And um, I'm sure maybe Betsy or Vicki could send someone an email that we sent out earlier today about it. But we're just helping out our, our program and supporting youth learning about nature and connecting their food. Our Food Hub is our second program. Food Connects works to increase wholesale access to locally produced food and develop new markets for local food producers while contributing to our local vibrant economy. We do this through our Food Hub, which serves as an aggregator and distributor of regional foods. So there's a couple of ways that our Food Hub is different than any regular food distributor. Uh, we are mission driven in all of our work we all of our food is source identified meaning i could tell you where it all comes from what towns uh, we strive to represent a diverse group of farmers and food producers who in turn offer unique products and follow high quality standards often organic humanely raised non-gmo etc we do not add a significant markup to our products and we ensure that farmers and food producers are getting the highest value for their product and we do just-in-time delivery service, meaning we'll pick up food from a farm on Tuesday and deliver it on Wednesday, for example. And that ensures the highest and freshest quality products, especially when it comes to the produce that we get. Our food hub currently serves southwestern Vermont, uh, southeastern Vermont, southwestern New Hampshire, the upper valley of both Vermont and New Hampshire, and western Massachusetts working with over 115 farms and food producers and nearly 200 buyers in these regions, which is pretty significant. Uh, and we aren't limited to our immediate region. We, ex uh, to expand the options that we can offer our customers, supplementing supply shorts, getting early spring crops and expanding our markets for our producers, we leverage our partnerships with the larger 
New England Food Hub Network to support small family farms and supply independent grocers and retailers located in further away places, including Vermont, Maine, and even Rhode Island. Uh, these producers and customers are mission aligned and allow us not only to support other food hubs like ours, but also other small local economies. Uh, these photos here um, on the left is Scott Brzozowski, our warehouse operation, operations coordinator um, with a delivery to the New Hampshire Food Bank. The photo in the middle is one of our refrigerated vans uh, delivering to Garden Market in Londonderry, Vermont. And the picture on the right is of our team making deliveries for the holiday meal boxes that are delivered to students by the WNESU. So a point of pride in our food hub is that we have a lot of diversity in our customers. They include schools, co-ops and independent grocery stores, hospitals and assisted living facilities, restaurants, businesses running meal programs, other food hubs, and even farm stores and some of our very own producers. Additionally, COVID during COVID-19, we started selling wholesale items to households in a curbside pickup model. This wide array of customers has proven to be invaluable for, for two reasons. The first is food access. The more places we're able to sell food locally means more opportunities for members from our community to interact with local food. And this is great, not only for our local food economy, but also for building community and connecting our neighbors with food, farmers, and the land around them. And the second reason is this diversity has built resiliency within our organization. Many larger distributors saw sales fall from large institutions during the start of COVID-19. And the focus, their focus shifted to larger urban areas. Our food hub was able to respond to this shift because of our nimbleness and in turn supply our small local stores with the food that they needed. In fact, we saw not only more independent stores turn to Food Connects for our services, but also saw a large increase in farm stores, in the sales to farm stores. As individual customers turned away from their bigger stores and they found that farm stores were more re a reliable food source, these farm stores realized that not only they needed to supplement their own produce, but also supply staple items and other local treats, for example, to satisfy the needs of their customers. And that's where we came in with our already established networks. Despite the challenges that COVID-19 did throw at us, um, our food hub was able to make over 100, uh, $1.1 million, $1 million in sales this past year, which is a huge shot in the arm, no pun intended, I just got my second shot today, to our local food economy, uh, local food producers and, and our local economy. When more dollars go back in, into to the farmers and more can be invested than in infrastructure and jobs. All these photos that you see are from deliveries over the past year, the Brattleboro Food Co-op, more meal boxes in the middle to the WNESU and on the right to Tableau Guild, one of our many farm stands that we sell to. And I just wanted to highlight some of the producers and the variety of products that we're able to sell. So on the left is Grateful Greens, which is in Brattleboro, a newer farm. And we actually helped James, the owner, kick off his distribution. And now we can get these high quality products to our wholesale customers. In the middle is one of my favorite products, Frisky Cow Gelato, located in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, owner, owner Linda has recently expanded her to a new facility and our two organizations are growing side by side with an amazing partnership. And we continue to find new markets for this delicious treat. If you haven't tried it, you definitely should. And on the right is Costa Hill, which is located in Pittsfield, Mass. And they do a wide variety, variety of ferments as well as in our very well-established business. And when we brought them on board, we were able to expand their geographic reach, which is just great. And as I said, our last program is our catalyst. It's more ambiguous than the other two. So in Food Connect's strategic plan, it calls for us to be a catalyst for food systems change in New England and beyond. So what does that mean? It's kind of vague. 
We believe that transforming the food system requires the direct engagement and empowerment of us all. We work to be a leader in strengthening the movement for community-based food systems. To do this, we do this by leveraging our relationships with different community partnerships and initiatives. Some examples of our roles include serving on the Wyndham County Hunger Council, playing a connector role in programs like Everyone Eats, being an established member of the new Vermont Food Waste brand, and by serving as leaders for collaborations like the Mananoc Restaurant Project, the Vermont Food Hub Collaborative, and Mananoc Fresh. Being a part of these outreach initiatives is essential and key to our work and mission to continue improving food access, essentially. Um, and most importantly, our programs work together to have a lasting impact. Our food hub opens new markets for farmers, helps ensure that farmland will be here for generations to come, and makes purchasing local food easier for wholesale buyers in our community. Our farm to school program develops lifelong healthy eating habits with children, grows engagement in the local food system, and supports cafeterias, classrooms, and communities in working together to have a collective impact. And when these two programs work together in harmony, we're able to support initiatives in so many different ways from collaboration and implementation to actually getting the food delivered. And I would be remiss if I did not mention our donors and corporate sponsors and how supportive they are. We are very grateful for all of our donors and we are funded through numerous grants, businesses in our community and individuals. We rely on the generosity of each one of these community partners to help our farm to school programs grow, build our food storage, purchase our vehicles, and implement our partnership and community initiatives. This photo is of our ribbon cutting in the winter of 2019, and due to the generosity of our donors, we were able to build ourselves that 1,000 square foot cooler and freezer that significantly increased our ability to store more perishable and frozen foods for a longer period of time. And it's very key to why we were able to uh, weather the pandemic so well. So thank you, that was a lot of me talking, um, but I really appreciate you all listening and um, letting us come here today. If you're interested in getting involved in any way, you can reach out to Vicki or I, um, or head over to our website, which is at the bottom, just foodconnects.org. And we would be happy to answer any questions that you have. And I can stop sharing my screen so I can see everyone. A lot of information. <laughs> so when did, when did Food Connect get started in, in this region? Well, that is a very interesting question because there's a couple of different dates and iterations of Food Connects, but as the organization we are today in 2013. And is there a network? because you talked about Keene and the region, is there a network of food connects? And so this is like a franchise nonprofit kind of no, concept? No, so we're not a franchise. So um, think of us more as like how the, the co-ops are modeled, right? There's co-ops all throughout the, the, com the community and um, there's, they work together and there's larger co-ops above them that help yep. them out. So. Food Connects is a food hub and nonprofit organization, and there are other food hubs uh, throughout the, the region. There's a bunch in Vermont, there's a bunch in New Hampshire, and we work with them under this larger New England Food Hub network, just as kind of a community of practice, really. And we work to coordinate schedules. So one of the things we do is work with uh, the Intervale Food Hub, for example, and we'll go up there and meet them halfway or something and you know swap products essentially. So we'll buy products from them and they'll buy products from us. Um, so we're supporting these smaller local food hub networks. Um, and actually there used to be a food hub in Keene, New Hampshire, Mananoc Menus. And that was run by the Cheshire County Conservation District. And the conservation district was like, well, you know, we're not really in the business of running a food hub and so, a few years ago before I joined the team, um, Food Connects 
enveloped Monadnock venues. And so we inherited all the Monadnock region producers and customers as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Laura, are you connected at all with Vermont Food Bank or Project Feed the Thousands or anything like that? So uh, the food bank is actually located in the same building we are. So there's that. But mm -hmm. our um, farm to school team is more closely connected with the food bank than I am um, in, in part of the work that they do on the Hunger Council and with Everyone Eats and just those connections there. But then our food hub will also make food donations to the food bank, um, you know, if a if a customer sends back a couple of cases of apples just because they ordered too many, we'll usually send that over to the food bank. They get a lot of yogurt from us and bread and things like that. Yeah, it's nice to have them as our neighbors. We also have against the grain in the same building. So we're really tuned in. That, that's going to turn into a big food building eventually. <laughs> I'd like to share a happy dollar um, for Richard Burkefield, executive director and co-founder of Food Connects and all the other SIT connections that have been part of the various iterations. Uh, very proud of all the work they've done. He is a wonderful executive director. Vicki and I both love working with him. Yes, we do. <laughs> it's awesome. I have a question. Sure, Vicki. How many people at this meeting know about the farm to school program or have had some interaction in the, in the schools with the program. And as your, and your experiences have been positive, you have comments about it, things you'd like to see happen there, um, anything like that? No, it's all good. I got one. <laughs> My kid loves root vegetables because of the program that was at Academy. So thank you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, Allie West, who is the um, food service director there, does a great job and works with us very closely. Um, and she and other food service directors in the region implement these harvest of the month taste tests, which are really great to get kids exactly to try new foods. Allie West is my daughter. <laughs> Well, you have a wonderful daughter. I love Allie. She's fantastic. <laughs> awesome. So, so tell me what you're doing with um, Everyone Eats, the, the program in Brattleboro. Yeah, so that is mainly um, managed through our farm to school program. So when we weren't able to be in schools this past year, um, the team was looking for other initiatives to still make sure that kids were getting fed. And so we were a part of the initial brainstorming the group with that project and how to implement it in this area. We're not the fiscal sponsors um, or the detail organizers for that, but we promote the program. We're writing about it. We're encouraging <coughs> people to go. We volunteer. Um, we've stored some of the meals in our cooler and freezer space as well. So we're kind of the uh, pick up, help out where we can uh, member of that group. We also have, um, there are, I think three of us or four of us who have been involved in the Hunger Council for a long time. And so there's a, there's a connection with Food Connects and the Hunger Council, which has been really helpful um, for everyone eats. It's, there's a big team um, initiative to keep to involve all of these different organizations to keep that to have made that program so successful. Um, yeah, and one of the requirements for the restaurants to participate in Everyone Eats is that they buy a certain percentage of local food. And because that percentage is there, um, and we have these already really well established networks, they were able to buy local food from us and make sure that the farmers got more dollars back. So it was really great. That's another reason why our sales were doing so much better is because we had a lot of a lot more restaurants than normal looking to us to to buy local food, which was awesome. Betsy. Hey, Laura. Hi. Um, I have a $5 happy dollar brag for Food Connects. Um, been on the board for seven years. 
very passionate about the organization and the team is amazing. Everybody on the board and part of the team is so passionate about what they do and what we do. I, I couldn't be prouder. And I really would encourage folks, even if it's just $5 to get on foodconnects.org and help us with the challenge um, with the uh, Guilford Country Store. Because the, the kids programs are really taking on a life of their own. And it's just wonderful to see these little people really getting excited about local healthy food. So thank you, Laura and Vicki, very, very much. Of course. <laughs> Thank you for all your work that you've done for us. <laughs> Maggie. Hi, so I know you do a lot with the school systems. I'm wondering, um, you had talked about assisted livings and um, long-term care facilities. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. And um, also I'm wondering, do you pre-prepare meals at all? Or is that something that you would consider in the future? Um, because I know like, um, like for us adult days, there are certain regulations we have to follow. And I know for childcare, there are certain regulations that need to be followed. I'm just wondering if that's something that you do. And if not, is that something you would ever consider expanding into doing? Sure, I'll, I'll answer both of those questions. So the, first, the second one, no, we do not do any food processing at Food Connects right now. Um, we're, so our food hub is solely a, a, distrib a distribution food hub. Um, it's something that we've toyed around with, but there are some other initiatives in both the Brattleboro and the Nanak region that we're kind of uh, tuned in on that are trying to do those things. And so um, working alongside them and supporting them with our networks instead of actually taking on a whole nother set of infrastructure that we would need to do. But we've, we've always been, you know, we're foodies. We're all foodies who work there. We love food. We love to cook. So it wouldn't be a stretch if we ever decided to go that route. Um, but I can't make any promises. In terms of uh, what we do with assisted living facilities and hospitals in, in the region is we're, what we're really doing is um, supplying them with local food. So I can talk about specifically uh, two that we have really great partnership with. American House in Keene is a, a, a senior living facility and they buy tons of local food uh, through us and they're really excited about um, bringing in new things and trying different local foods and getting the, all the individuals who are living there to taste the community, which is great. Um, and uh, Brattleboro Memorial Hospital, we work with Jamie to just source different types of local food and really think about what could be incorporated in the menu when we're thinking of food as medicine, which is uh, a term that we're, we're trying to get out more in the community is how can we heal people through food. Um, and you know, other things that we do with these facilities, a, a new initiative we're working on is these um, recipe cards. And so how to actually use the local food we got. Be because sometimes some of the local products we have are a little different than normal. We have a, a smoked maple syrup. How do you use that? <laughs> you know, it's a, it can be used as a marinade more often than not. And so we're taking all the recipe or all the ingredients that we have and sharing out um, healthful and nutritious recipes. That is a project that soon you'll see those um, in the next couple of months or so. But they're, they're always um, interested in asking about different uh, like ways that they can help promote local food in their facilities too. If you can come up with something for rutabagas, that would be awesome. <laughs> we have a lot of ruta rutabagas in our Ruta staff fridge right now. <laughs> Very challenging and many, many rutabagas. Yeah. Um, so if, is it okay if I say something now? Please go ahead. So, um, I was just going to, this is a shameless pitch, plug, whatever, something I do. Um, but one of, the, one of the things that I'm working on here is to get as many local businesses as I can or people, just regular people involved in the farm to school program in helping establish um, new farm to school programs in schools that are not members right now and, and also adding to those that are so that we can expand the program. So 
the shameless plug is if you know any businesses, if you know people who, are, who might be interested in helping with this, please send them my way and I'd love to talk to them um, because um, we've, I've been, it's been really successful the last couple months trying to bring people in and tell them all about the programs. And we were just lucky enough to have a business in the Deerfield Valley that stepped up. And so now we're given the opportunity to continue developing that program up there or over there. And that's been, that has really opened some doors. So um, if you know anybody or you think you'd like to be involved in some way, please reach out. It would be awesome to talk to you about it. Was that shameless? That was, it was fun. Perfect. <laughs> it was lovely. And um, Vicki, reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you more about the Deerfield Valley and um, adult days and where there might be some opportunity around there. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, what a great program. Thank you Thank for you. updating us, Laura. Yes. Thank you for having us. This was great. Awesome. Okay. Welcome to visit anytime. <laughs> We're also looking for members always. Um, so unless anyone has any other questions, we'll call the meeting to a close and look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Have a good day.